Hello, my young Jedi friends and Sith Lords alike. This is a very special episode which we got. We're getting back into Star Wars, which is my favorite series of films and all time, including Clone Wars. And we may include some legends somewhere in these videos and also mainly the canon, which is going to be on a big subject for today's video. And since I was trying to figure out a very good intro, all I'm doing is I'm just customizing a lightsaber with just some paint. I haven't got a fancy background, but I do have a furry little guy down here. Boris is going to help us out with this video. He's just down. Happy New Year, scum. Shut up. <laughs> so I decided to have a little bit of fun just with this one, as this is a lightsaber I'm customizing. And there's also a retro one just behind Ben if he wants to get his one out. So, just before we get started with this, I have to do a fabulous intro. Here we go. Here we go. And let's get ready to run, boys and girls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There we go. Let's say Star Wars is without a doubt. Despite having three lots of trilogies, it is an amazing movie. There have been some if, buts, and maybes about certain things, but it can't be denied that it's probably the biggest sci-fi franchise to date other than, even though I hate the series, Star Trek. But Star Wars was the better one of the two, purely for the fact that it had everything in it. Like, you had fantasy, you had sci-fi, you had pretty much everything in between. Yeah, of course. But the biggest issue, as I said on this show, is that prequels always make things worse. And case in point, the Star Wars ones, namely. Because, well, there were some good moments within it that had been a bit lacklustre. Like, the big issue, as we've said a few times, is that it was just time constraint to the point where... Somehow, Anakin aged up so quickly, but everyone else can barely age today. Well, hence why Anakin's the main focus of this video. Specifically, the biggest plot hole which the new trilogy of films, which personally I will hope eventually that they will be non-canon and they'll be legends because personally I think they suck. I would not that they... Not they're bad films, not they're absolutely terrible, god-awful, but no. then again, the biggest plot hole it creates is, does the prophecy of the Chosen One, i.e. Anakin, Darth Vader, bringing balance to the Force, did Anakin basically die for nil? Die for nothing now? Uh, in my opinion, kind of, before we get any side, for me, kind of yes and no, but I'll explain why in a minute. Do, but Ben, do you think it kind of, do you think Anakin died for nothing? despite what the new trilogy has offered for us now. The thing is, the whole concept of balance is a bit subjective, because with the prequels, it was like suggested that the whole point of balance to the Force was that it was going to be the light side of the dark side. Yeah. But as you get further into the lore of Star Wars, the Force, the light and the dark, it's not the like good versus evil... It's two sides of a coin. It's kind of yin and yang. There's balance between the both. That should be. But by the end of it, when you get to like episode nine with the last uh, Sky, well, Rise of Skywalker, the Rise of Skywalker. With that again, they try playing on the idea of that there had to be either the light or the dark. But it doesn't work like that because. Neither one is truly good. Neither one is truly bad. Like, I know obviously Palpatine is the big honcho that is like the main bad guy, but there have been users with the dark side of the force that weren't fully bad. Case in point, uh, Mace Windu. Because yes. his lightsaber being purple would indicate that he's half and half. Yeah, hence like red, red and blue mixed together makes purple. Yes. So... This is why I find it quite difficult to try and grasp my head on the whole concept of the big antithesis to the whole story being that there had to be only light that would make it balanced. Exactly. I mean, the thing is as well is that I said to you, 
the re I think the main reason behind why there's so few Sith Lords is because obviously the more people that you that side of the force, the weaker it is. Hence why the Jedi got out so easily because the light side of the force was overstrained by too many people using the light side compared to the dark. Well, I, I suppose in a way, yes. But with with the whole prophecy, if you guys, if you're gonna if you're gonna be here, you're likely a Star Wars fan. If not, then God, do you have some homework to do, my friends, for a good ten years or so? Uh, but the prophecy of Anakin bringing um, bringing balance to the Force, which he kills the Emperor, although that's no longer canon now, uh, that he kills the Emperor, brings balance to the Force, and he dies as well. And obviously at the end of episode six, Return of the Jedi, we go, oh, that's the end of the arc, end of the story. And we were, everybody was fine with it. And then obviously Disney likes to meddle in things as they always do and likes to mess a lot of things up. Mm -hmm. So when we go from there, they decide to bring back Palpatine, the big bad, which now that I think about it, bring back Palpatine as the big bad kind of makes a little bit of sense. If you go into the whole Legends continuity, which in Legends, he already had plans to clone himself. He already had plans to clone himself to transfer his... It's a, a way of transferring his consciousness into another body. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a picture, Ben, of Sidious when he's got all the tubes and everything, and all the bits and bobs stuck into him, if you can get that up. Not yeah. sure if I'll see it on my screen. Let's have a look. There we go. Right. So pretty much what we have here, guys, is the Palpatine, which we got. A lot of people, we didn't get an explanation in the films as to whether this was Palpatine, Palpatine, or if this was a clone of some sort. And from what I can get from like the novelization is that this is basically a clone which wasn't ready, basically, for his consciousness. So it's being this, the flesh and everything's being kept alive by artificial means. Mm -hmm. But it's his consciousness. But this wasn't explained in the films. But in a way, with transferring his Sith consciousness uh, to a clone body, and with Anakin being basically the chosen one who dies, and then obviously you still have Luke left, do you think this... In your opinion, Ben, does this kind of negate the prophecy? So if Palpatine's still here in a clone body, in a sense... Would you think he died for nothing? Yeah, definitely. Because the one thing that they show as a trope throughout the entire saga of all these films is that they can sense other forces, whether they're the dark side or the light side. Like They can pick off some sort of sense, whether it's the chlorine, whatever it is that the certain yeah. side of the force gives off. So, again, that undoes so much because then why didn't Luke do anything sooner to stop him because if he was able to sense the future of Kylo Ren turning against him then why was he not able to sense him when he is literally well, the only Sith Lord that's still alive as far as I'm aware well from another perspective which I'll be hoping to have Jesse on soon to have another thought on this which was he argues to me because we're both star wars fans argues to me that in a way it's the perfect ending and i was like okay why and said well anakin didn't die for nothing and i was like well, would you please explain and so okay. he explained it to me in his way that anakin did bring balance to the force sort of at that time but it feels a little bit like a cop-out answer they did destroy the big bad for like something like 30 odd years i can't remember exactly how long then obviously anakin died the big bad died and obviously there was luke that was left who was basically the one who is the real chosen one which kind of does make sense as he's pretty much the last sort of new jedi if you mm -hmm. look at it that way but then it feels like a little bit of a cop-out answer because it did cause peace for a time, and it did bring balance to the Force for a time. But then again, well, how did Luke not sense 
the like the emperor's like force energy, his essence, even if he was cloning himself. And then obviously later on after that, I don't think Luke could have predicted that Kylo Ren would maybe turn against him. But then Palpatine was still in the background because Snoke is not actually a being. Snoke is kind of like a dodgy he's clone. Maybe a being, and he thinks his own thoughts are his own, and he's acting on his own. Mm. But Palpatine's like kind of like the string to like the marionette, basically, and he's controlling yeah. his thoughts and everything. So Snoke thinks he's his own person, but he's actually not. He's just a puppet. As mm. we saw in Rise of Skywalker, there was like vats of Snoke in there. Mm. So in a way, it did bring Bats to the Force for a time. And then Disney got hold of it and decided to bring him back. But then that creates the biggest plot hole, which basically negates the point of six films. You know? Yeah. This is why it annoys me when it comes to Disney trying to grab hold of a franchise because they only see it for the terms of what can we exploit out of people instead of what can we do for a story. Yeah. Case in point, the Mandalorian series. Now, I've not watched a lot of it yet because I've been differing whether or not to watch it. It's an interesting like gap between the reality of Star Wars because we don't I really have... I quite like it, actually. Well, this is it. Like, it helps like build bridges between the rest of the worlds. But this again is like another plot hole. Is well, what happens to Grogu? Like, how come Luke never did anything to find him? It took. I mean, how long did it take him for to train to become a Jedi? You mean Grogu or Luke? Luke. Well, the thing is, like, with uh, when he was on Dagobah and everything, and then he went off to face Darth Vader. What did he have? Like a couple hours of training before he went to fight Darth Vader for the first time? Yeah. I was like, and then after, and then between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, that's about a year. And so I'm not sure if like it was a, a filming sort of thing because Luke, because George Lucas originally wanted his lightsaber to be blue, which represents Jedi Knight, which would make more sense for the skill level which Luke is at. Mm-hmm. But having a green lightsaber had to have a green lightsaber because the blue one wouldn't show up on the blue sky in the background. So mm. that was like kind of a more artistic thing. But then again, he's at the point where he's like a Jedi master. But at the same time, you've had these Padawans and everything, these younglings that have trained since like they were born, basically. Yeah. So that doesn't make any sense to me, which no. that's one big gripe I have with the originals. Well, this is it. Like a lot of the issues with Star Wars, while it is a great saga of movies, the timelines in terms of how they explain stuff are very well exta- established. Yeah, because it's like, as you say, like you get all the ones they train for years from the moment they can pretty much walk, if not soon. Yeah. But then, it, I don't know whether it varies from species to species as well, because obviously Grogu being whatever species that Yoda is, well, he's Yoda technically... Does, I, don't, I don't think in canon Yoda actually... I don't think his species has been confirmed yet. No. This is a... There's so many things that they've never really confirmed but much. That baby Yoda, Gorgon, is, uh, I think, about 50 years old. Yes. I think so, because obviously his species lives for a long time. Because I think when Yoda died, he was like 900 plus years old. He was 905 years old. Hmm. But again, it's one of those things where how do you justify the timeline for certain species depending on how much a species you can live for? Because yeah. obviously there's so many various species within Star Wars that you could easily have one that is like... Ah, uh, oh, I can never remember the, what it is. But there's like an insect on in the world where it may... F- literally lives and dies within a day you could easily have a species like that within star wars that barely lives like in a week if it were to become a jedi it would take like perhaps what two days and then it would be dead by like the seventh day yeah well just going back to like going back to that kind of point with palpatine being a clone in a way i think it was actually pretty clever on disney's part and it kind of emphasizes that point with like if we were if we kind of were privy to that he 
was cloning and everything, maybe in Empire Strikes Back, back then. But I doubt George Lucas was thinking of cloning back then. Mm. So I reckon if it was hinted to in Empire Strikes Back that he might have been like cloning himself, whether in the case of his death, which he was, but if we got a subtle little hint at that, I think maybe it could have left episode six open-ended in a new trilogy. And then yes. we kind of would have been a bit more forgiving when the new trilogy came along instead of just going, oh, Palpatine's back. See, How? <laughs> if anything, it would have been more interesting if someone else took over Palpatine's position. So it ended up being a new bad guy for someone to go up against and recycling the same problem. Yeah. Because you can have another trilogy that's after the one that we've just had. Oh, by the way, he's alive. He's like one of the members of the staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> yeah, carry on. But, but the thing is, I don't fully understand the reasoning behind why he is the way he is. Like, at least with Count Dooku, there was some relevance to why, the same with Darth Maul. And the same with Vader. They all had an underlining reason as to why they were a bad guy to agree. Yeah. But I don't think Palpatine had a obvious answer other than the fact that he just wanted to control everything in the galaxy. Yeah, but once he's done that, what then? Well, this is it. Like, it's just he like did that. Like, I don't care how much you like sitting on that throne. <laughs> you'll have eternal power and then you'll get friggin' bored, you know? Oh. So... And then having these Star Destroyers at the end, which were just, for some reason, under the planet's surface, and he brought back the Star Destroyers. And I was just like, okay, yeah, he's the big bad and everything, but why? Why is he doing it? But this is it. Like, I hate it. That was the one thing I hated about the trilogy. Is like, so you've literally made a planet into a weapon. As I remember, did it not have, like, engines somehow? Planet to make it move as well, or am I imagining wrong? No, I think you're thinking of the Death Star. I think you're thinking of Star Killer Base. Mm. Yeah, Star Killer Base was basically a planet cannon in a way. But this is like that. That wouldn't really work much unless you were aiming at the right planet, because obviously planets like move. That's yeah, it's going. Oh, we're going to kill the enemy. Oh, we missed it. We're going to have to wait another year. <laughs> Ah, damn it, we missed it by like a millimetre. We have yeah, to wait going, oh, we're going to have to wait till Christmas, kids. Hang on. <laughs> Just have someone on the gun to it, like, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. Oh, what time is it? Ah, shoot. And it's like, oh, it's five minutes past 12, we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is as well, is it just me? Or is it that he looks... I know, obviously, he's meant to be a dodgy clone, but he looks even more bizarre as a clone than when he like transformed in the first place. Well, yeah, I, I get that. But at the same time, like the sort of reasoning behind that is that he was a clone that basically was not ready. So transferring his, uh, his consciousness into another clone body, I think it's a freaking cool idea, although... It was. It's not officially. I don't think it's officially in canon yet, or it might be in canon because it was mostly just existed in legends. Mm. Um, in case you any, or if in case any of you are wondering what I'm on about or watching this in the future, canon is basically what's happening, what's like set in stone. Legends is kind of like alternate timelines, like what could have happened, what ifs, um, mm. because that exists primarily in legends. But with him being a dodgy clone who wasn't ready and everything like that, he had Snoke acting as his, like his puppet and everything. With bringing back Palpatine, I just think with Anakin, bringing balance to the Force, like, there can't be light without dark. It's I can't remember where the quote came from, but it's, yeah, where there is light, the darkness must rise to meet, to meet it. So there mm -hmm. can't be one without the other. So, yeah. in a way, it was my friend Jesse's argument of basically doing away with both the Jedi doing away with the Sith, so that's basically gone. Yes. And then, obviously, you had Luke, who was basically a new generation, who was, I think, in a way, in his own way, trying to use the dark side as well as the light side, but still remaining, like, good, having morals and so on. But at the same time, the Jedi and the Sith is a made-up thing. So I don't really see that as that truly mattering. 
Mm -hmm. in a way. So do you see my point? Yeah, well, this is it. The thing I find fascinating, I don't know whether it's part of canon or legends, but there is called which is a those that walk the thin line between the two sides. But it's not... I think they could have explored that more in the newer trilogy instead of, like, going, oh, yeah, we still got a Sith Lord and we got a Sith... Would you say Kylo Ren was, like, a Sith Knight? Because it's, like, the Knights of Ren, so it's, like, a Sith Knight instead? Yeah, yeah. And then you get, like, Rey, who isn't a the Jedi point. Knight, but somehow is a... But she's the the she's the granddaughter of Palpatine. Yes. <sighs> hey, I thought that was a really cool twist because obviously they were trying to do the same trope what they did with Luke is that they try to show her the darker side and she goes more towards the light. But as we've already said, that's not relevant given the fact that she can pretty much do both, and it's not a her as much. Like, with Kylo, he had, like, a wave. He always had a waver between the two sides. He was either trying too hard to do one or the other. Yeah. Because the one thing that a lot of people picked up on when it was episode seven was that he didn't actually kill his dad. His dad pull, pushed the button on the saber to kill himself. Yeah, I've try. seen that theory, yeah. Which, yeah. Proves the point that he wasn't fully committed to being what he was. Which explains why he was aggressive because he was frustrated with trying to figure out where he placed himself. But Ray, who's just a random person from, she's not even—is it from Tatooine or is it like some other junk? No, it's conveniently from a like place, a junk planet called Jakku, which is pretty much like Tatooine, but not. She somehow has more of an attuned agenda with the Force than he does, and yet he's had like years of training between Luke and Snoke, who ends up obviously being Palpatine. Yeah, but to be honest, I I was hoping they were going to carry on with Snoke because I thought, oh, we've got a new villain. What, where's this going to go? You know. I mean, you could have it like with Snoke. You could have said that he could have been like a twisted Jedi instead of being the puppet of Palpatine. Because my original theory of what I thought Snoke was going to be for the new trilogy, I thought he might have been a secret apprentice that Darth Vader didn't know about. Mm. That's yeah. what I, that was one theory I thought. Oh, did I thought did Palpatine have like a secret apprentice or something? Because I know in the games, which is technically legends, not canon, there is an apprentice that Vader has called Starkiller. Yeah, although I wish that was canon. It's such a good story. Again, would have been more of an interesting plot twist that you could have had. Starkiller could have been the big bad instead, trying to take on from Vader's legacy. Well, in a way, yeah, because obviously you had Galen Merrick, which was the original, original Starkiller, and obviously Starkiller is a clone. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's rumours that the original Galen Merrick is still alive, and then there's another clone, which there's a light side and a dark side ending to Force Unleashed 2. Mm -hmm. And the... The light side version is basically where he doesn't decide... The clone doesn't decide to kill Vader... And he saves Juno, Darth Vader gets arrested, and that's the end of that. The dark side ending is where you is where Starkiller goes to kill Vader, then gets stabbed through the chest by yet another clone. So there's another clone of Starkiller. So which right, okay, if there was a dark side Starkiller, maybe that maybe at the end of those games could have carried on. Mm -hmm. I felt that would have had that had legs, that had potential. Because yeah. I would love to see, I think we would all love to see a Star Killer on the big screen. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, the whole premise behind Star Wars, I don't know if it's just me, but it's all about legacy. Yeah. Like, the, the whole point of it, like, it's following, trying to deviate from your predecessor's story to try and make your own way in the world. Which is like, so between the battle of Anna, well Vader and Luke is that Luke is basically the complete opposite to his father who turned to the dark side 
But then, yeah, of course, and who ultimately, without unless he unless without his son, he wouldn't have been redeemed. And then because when Darth Vader, because Darth Vader is the subject of a lot of uh, university students who are studying uh, in psychology, as Darth Vader and Anakin are described as two completely different people. And that when Darth Vader refers to Anakin, he's not referring to himself, he's referring to somebody else. Yeah. Darth Vader is a completely different personality. It's like a, a split Associ- personality kind of thing. It's like disassociated personality sort of thing. That's exactly what it's called. Uh, the thing is, like, I don't understand Star Wars' obsession with clones. Like, It was an interesting concept to explain why there are so many stormtroopers that can be the all were what they were, they're all the same height, whatever. That was a good thing. And then it was like, at least in the newer movies, they said, oh, yeah, we basically fudged up. We couldn't keep cloning them because our cloning supplies screwed up, so we had to recruit kids at stormtroopers. Yeah. It's like you get the clone of Palpatine and everything else, and it's just like... It's like Control-C, Control-V, Control-C, Control-V. Like That's literally how they make an army. Yeah. But it's just, after a while, it's like, well, if that's the case, why didn't they focus their efforts on destroying the cloning facilities first and then attack the Empire? Because they attacked the Empire first, but obviously they got all the other clone abilities. They can literally bring up their army within a day, give or take. Yeah. But... Well, there's something I would have loved to have seen, which I... At my job, I have somebody who I work with, Pete, who is another Star Wars fan, and we chat about alternative narratives and everything. And he said one really cool thing, which could have been in one of the new trilogy of Star Wars films, that what if we saw a battle between, for the, maybe the Galactic Empire, possibly, or, oh no, the First Order, sorry. That what if there was either the Rebellion or the First Order that decided... That somewhere on another planet that there was an army of deactivated rogue droids that still were there after Order 66. Mm. And then maybe one side was using uh, the droids. So we see a fun little return of the droids. But maybe on the Rebellion side that were sort of activated in another way to fight for them. Which I would love to have seen something like that. Well, this is it. Like I like the idea of the droid battle. But again, they like literally used it for part of Episode 1 and gave up. Hmm. And that really bugs me, because it's like with the Mandalorian series, you get those really bulky droids. What are they? I can't remember what they're called now. Um, ah, I don't know what they're called. The fact that they are literally a non-stop killing machine that literally could crush anybody. Where was that? Like, where the hell were they? I don't know. Were they? Charge? Like, did they forget to pay the Alecky bill for them to put on charge or something? Oh God knows. Maybe they ran out of wi- Maybe they Maybe they couldn't pay their Wi-Fi. I'm not sure. <laughs> couldn't pay EE. <EE-E. laughs> oh God. But yeah, but like, there's obviously now the new trilogy of films has opened too many plot holes to count. Mm-hmm. As Ben always likes to say, more plot holes than Swiss cheese. Oh. So, right. With like so many plot holes, like plot holes in that, the frustrating bit is now trying to fill them in because people have tried over the years, and now you have so many things. Like I consider, as a lot of fans, sort of me included, which consider the new trilogy of films done by Disney and not by George Lucas as kind of a spit in the face to Sp- Star Wars fans. Yeah, no, because I agree. Like the the second film in the trilogy, for example, the Last Jedi, which was done by another director. It wasn't done by J.J. Abrams. It was done by somebody else. And you have the start of the film, which starts off with like the lightsaber, specifically Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, which is it's sentimental to Star Wars fans and it's key to the story and it represents so much about the Jedi and about you know the whole kind of mythos of like the Jedi and so on. And how does it start? It starts with Luke Skywalker just chucking it over his shoulder. Yeah. And that royally pissed me off when I was in the cinema. I hated that. Yeah, but the thing is with that trilogy, it they just, wrote it kind of Luke. felt to me like like Disney was just going, Hey George <laughs> Well the thing is with the, when they brought 
and Luke, they ruined him so much because it wasn't going to be his story. No. Which I can understand, but there's a better way of doing it other than saying, yeah, Ray's the one we want to focus on. Let's just focus on her and make Luke this grumpy old git. Yeah, but like, what if you had like Luke Skywalker in like a old old Obi Wan Kenobi kind of role? They tried doing that. He did have the cloak, but the thing is, he just looked like he was on the edge of like everything. Like the fact that he get how much had gone wrong, he looked like he was ready to finish everything. I'm trying to word this for the YouTube police, but. That's the really weird attitude to have for Luke, given the fact that he was the one that was meant to bring hope to the galaxy. And it. Yeah. Like, I mean, the thing is, I wouldn't have had it so that all of his students died. I would have just had that the students had to run and hide away, and they could have brought them in towards the end, ready to learn through, instead of just going, oh, by the way, there's these texts that you can see read through, and then you're at like, have a power boost. Yeah, basically. And then, like, the Knights of Ren. Where did they go? No, this is it. Like, I mean... But don't show us these things and just don't no. explain anything. Because no, they didn't they... die, obviously. No, they just... they. Because it was really bad explained what happened. That, obviously, Luke tries to kill Ben, but he gets caught at the last minute. There's a force explosion... Which we, was it Luke or was it Ben? Because I think it was Ben. Yeah, I think it was Ben. But the problem is, with like everything the Jedi stands for and everything that Luke stands for, like killing, like I understand like the reasoning, but at the same time, for if he was trying to kill Kylo Ren or Ben Solo, that goes against the Jedi code and it goes exactly. against the like side like, way. So in um, the second film. It basically goes against everything that's, like, Jedi, basically. And like, why? Exactly. I mean, the thing is, as well, I know, obviously, they couldn't do it for the older films because, like, it didn't exist at the time because his character had only been written for the prequels. But I would argue it would have been quite interesting if there could have been a moment where, when Luke is training up the new side, Jedi, that you have Qui Gon Jinn be his like mentor because Ooh. you had you had Yoda. Qui Gon Jinn was the first one to understand the whole concept of being a Force ghost, as far as it's aware as it's shown in the Clone Wars, like TV series. Yes. So again, it would have been great to bring in another great Jedi to help guide the way. Yes, because at least then have to rely on an older version of um, Obi-Wan because obviously the lack of footage it wouldn't work Yoda, he like he was good for the original movies and he was okay for the prequels but it made no sense for him to come back for the newer ones as a force ghost because he barely knew Luke and it was like he trained him a little but didn't really explain much about the force it was more about I don't think Yoda was much of a master with the Force compared to Qui-Gon. Um, well, thing is, Yoda had a lifetime of experience, so I'd argue that. But at the same time, Qui-Gon, like the Jedi kind of abused the way they used the Force. They didn't use it the way it was meant to be used, whereas Qui-Gon followed wherever the Force took him, which is how the Force is meant to be used. Which is, it would have made more sense to have him be like a Force ghost guide because he was more in tune with it than anybody else exactly i mean there is that scene towards the end of the last film where ray's using the force and you see all the force ghosts with her but that was it like yeah but like, we didn't even get a cameo from hayden christensen nothing no all we got was his voice and like I was so disappointed with the end of that film. So I thought I was going to see Hayden Christensen again. Yeah. But, but like, as that... we found out with Disney, we can't have nice things. So No, no. But the thing is as well is... I think the ending of that film where she goes to Skywalker, that lift off so many people 
Because she didn't really earn the title of it, in my opinion. No. Like, she didn't have to say she was a Palpatine. She could have just said she was just Rey, and that would have been it. Basically. Like, there's no justification for her to take the Skywalker name. No. And, if anything, it was more of a kick in the teeth for both Rhea, because... Who's to say that she doesn't get knocked into the dark side of the Force later on? Oh, sorry. One of my favourite scenes of Leia. Hang on. Like, does this ring any bells? Oh. <laughs> Do you remember that phrase? That felt so forced. That really miffed me off because... Like, I'm sorry, but if you want to make her like a Force-sensitive being whatever, too freaking late, that ship sailed. <laughs> it just didn't make any sense because... Oh, that was so funny, though. I laughed so hard at that scene in the cinema. Yeah, but the thing is, she was in space for like 10 seconds. She would have exploded and died. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if like it goes, oh, the four ways we do not know these things. Absolute codswallop. And I'm codswallop because it's the closest thing I can think of. Codswallop. But it's just... And then they wanted to, like, I think kind of because... I can't remember if Carrie Fisher died. Yes, she did. She, like, she died, died midway. I think she died in the middle of production of the last film, I think. No, it was the second one. Oh, the second one, right. Yeah, they so, CGI'd her in for the third one. Yeah, because I think they wanted to, like, shoehorn, shoehorn her in, like, with Luke training her as a Jedi. But at the same time, it just felt so forced. It felt, like, too little too late. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like... If that was the case, right? How come Vader didn't realise that he, that was his daughter when she confronts him in the original movie? How? Like, yeah, because one of the most, the chosen one, the most power, one of the most powerful Force users, couldn't even tell that was his own daughter, but yet he could tell with Luke. Yes. How does that work? Maybe it's just the the impact of everything and just the amount of metachlorians in the system. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I don't know, maybe, but. And then it was just like, it was just like, Luke, you kissed your sister? <laughs> I mean, given that plot logic, like, there was a need for that in the original movies. Like, it doesn't really change anything no. other than makes it really awkward. No. I mean, I would have thought, maybe as a little tweet, that Luke been maybe a servant to her instead who then slowly goes becoming a Jedi and becomes her bodyguard. That could have been more interesting than saying, oh, by the way, he's your brother. Oh, I'm well, just, like, just throwing it out there. Well, I mean, like, besides the fact that they find out they're brother and sister, she lived a life of luxury. He was on a, de a desert planet and pretty much almost in slavery. What else happened besides his aunt and uncle got fried to a crisp? Uh, yeah, I get you, yeah. Cause there wasn't really much to him other than that he was just conveniently saved by Obi-Wan Kenobi and became a Jedi. Yeah, but at the same time, became a Jedi far too quickly. This is the biggest yeah. work all Star Wars fans have. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, it's like, well, like I said earlier about like how Rey became so so quick because she read the Jedi text. Why didn't Luke do the same? Well, in that case, every time I've messaged like my mum or my mum or whatever saying I want to, uh, saying I want to win the lottery, then God, I would have been a freaking trillionaire by now if that was possible. <laughs> it's just, I don't understand it's Star Wars and everything, but. It's just Disney does not understand Star Wars, in my opinion. No, it's more as a way of creating merchandise because the amount of stuff that they have on sale is uh, ridiculous. Like, it's got to the point where they probably have like an entire warehouse the size of Amazon and it was half of the stock that they've made. Oh, to be honest, it just feels like to me at this point uh, with Disney, if they can milk anything for money, you can bet they will. Yeah. It's there's so many random little things about the entire series that it's such an obscure thing that it's trying to wrap my head around. 
because obviously Palpatine, you said to me, was the reason why Anakin exists, because he manipulated the Metachlorians um, that caused him to... Do you have that panel? And I I'll do indeed. Explain that bit. Because I just find it such a weird concept. It's like a messiah complex of, of sorts. Um, so, sort of. I'll explain in a minute when the slide's up. Right, guys, so I can't remember which comic this is from, but basically there's just a very short story when Anakin basically interacts with Lord Moman, which is kind of like, in a way, like a Sith ghost. And he goes to, like, the Sith temple, which he tries to open a magical door in order to hopefully bring back Padme from the dead. And basically his essence gets sucked out of his body, goes into this mysterious world, and he sees visions of, like, his wife dying again. He sees visions of his mother... And the scene which you see here, which I can't remember how it changed, but that's but now it was like hinted that Palpatine was the one who basically that the the prophecy of the chosen one is someone who a force powerful force user who is born to no father and only born to the mother, so it is basically conceived by the force basically mm -hmm. but then there was a comic book panel where it was meant to be hinted at palpatine basically sort of manipulate the force and the medicorians to create anakin so because there was a, a, a part of the script in revenge of the sith where george lucas wrote in that there was going to be some dialogue between palpatine and anakin that he was basically going to try and hint that through manipulating the Metachlorians, you can sort of think of me as your father. But then they changed it to Darth Plagueis, which was uh, Sidious's master, which, okay, that's kind of a cool thing. But at the same time, I think being conceived just by the Force itself, I think that's quite cool if that's kind of left up in the air, because mm -hmm. then you've got to answer then more questions after that. Yes. There's certain things which I think you can just leave up in the air. Well, the thing is, it, the Force as a whole is such an ambiguous thing. It's literally driven by plot logic that anything can happen, which sometimes is good, but the big problem is that it's a bit bad. Basically going, by the way, the Force can do this. Just because. Oh, yeah, just like, why does this happen? Because the Force. Yeah. But then I mean, like, yeah, but why? <laughs> I mean, they only briefly explain the forces with Qui-Gon in Phantom Menace saying that it's basically what connects everything in the universe to one another as like these little microscopic particles or beings or whatever that you can basically manipulate as you need to do. But at the same time, it's like, well, how do you explain it being both dark and light, if it's Metachlorians that Jedi and the Sith do, what makes it bad? What makes it good? What makes it light? Yes. Because supposedly only the Sith Lords are able to force heal because Jedis aren't doing it. No, yet... no, it's actually the other way around. This is where I get confused. I hear one thing, then someone says it's just like... Because the thing is, as well, is like the Force Lightning is a Sith move. That's a, dark, a dark side power, yeah. But yet, Ray wasn't tapping much into the dark side when it accidentally happened. He was trying to fight against I know, Kylo. I know, I know. So. I don't get it either. I, it, I, all I can say is I just blame Disney. Yeah. Blame Disney too, to be honest. But. But it's just, uh, uh, just Disney, just like, just, just stop. Like, I am pretty much, I am happy with thinking of Star Wars going from one to six. Yeah. And I'm happy with that. But, and obviously Clone Wars in there, The Mandalorian I'm fine with, and obviously mm. Rogue One, so on. And I just think, I will just leave that right up to basically The Mandalorian. And then obviously we're going to get the book of, the book of uh, Boba Fett at some point. We've got the Kenobi series, which mm -hmm. I'm most looking forward to, because then I yeah. heard it was meant to be six series, and then it was dropped to four episodes, and then there was six, but I don't know. But I'm looking forward to the Kenobi series, for sure. And mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what he was doing in between episodes three and four, 
which I think will be a really nice sort of wrap up for his arc, I think. Yeah. And Ian McGregor always said he wanted to come back and do it if he was asked to, mm. which I'm quite happy about. So, but and also Hayden Christensen, uh, aka Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, is also coming back for the Kenobi series. Which would be quite good to try and figure out how Anakin uh, found him sooner. Because, like you say, he's the chosen one. He should be able to detect anybody using the Force. And it's not and literally just switch off the Force. Because when you're attuned to the universe, like you could easily do it without knowing. Exactly. And obviously Anakin spent years trying to find Obi-Wan again. Mm. So I'll be looking forward to that because I, I don't think they'll have him return in a, just a flashback capacity. No. I think he'll have a maybe a bit more of a uh, bit more of a role for the series, which I'll look forward to. Which I think is either I don't think it's going to be this year. I think it's going to be more likely twenty twenty two. Give or take, yeah, yeah. But is there anything you want to add to today's subject? No, I just think uh, eventually when we move on, going to move on to a lot more Star Wars uh, content after that. But obviously, it's Ben's topic for next time, which, what will that be? I want to delve into Transformers. I know, obviously, you've not really enjoyed the movies. I like them to a degree, but it's the whole concept of Transformers as a whole, because there's iterations over the past decades. There's so many different TV series, movies, whatever. And... Given the fact that the last movie we got was Bumblebee, which I think is meant to be as like a soft reboot. Yeah. So I'd like to try and figure out what they could go from there onwards. Because while the Michael Bay movies were good, there is a lot of things that grinds my gears and does my head in in terms of Basically, logic. Basically, just add enough explosions and it will be amazing. Yeah. Explosions and a fit woman and you're happy as Larry because that's literally every Michael Bay movie is explosions and fit women. Basically. But there we go. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, folks. It's been a bit of a short episode round out Sith Lords, Jedi Knights, and everything else in between. He's been busy painting, becoming a. I wouldn't say Jedi Knight. He's more like Lord most days when he harasses the cat. But thanks again for joining us, and as usual, folks, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. And don't forget, may the Force be with you. Be with you.